Hello, my name is Scott Lucier. I'm a digital cartographer. I've been teaching GIS skills for nearly 20 years at a university in Boston and online, and I'm gonna teach you how to do this waterline effect. I've spent literally hundreds of hours trying to perfect this thing, and uh, I'm gonna teach you how I do it, and maybe save you some time. Uh, at the end, I'm gonna show you how to take these files and then pop them right into felt. So waterlines, waterlines are just beautiful. They are um, this sort of the shimmering wave-like shape burst fill, you know, really just a, an iconic, beautiful style popularized by the USGS in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And, um, you know, really just an iconic style that I, you know, is really beautiful and, um, people just love. So, um, let's look at an original, uh, to get us going here. Here is a GeoTIFF file from the TopoView, USGS TopoView website, which is a really cool re uh, website to check out. I encourage you to go take a look at that. Um, and this is what we're trying to accomplish, right? Really just a series of buffers. Buffers are just a line around a polygon at a specified distance. It's one of the first things we learn when we start to learn GIS, uh, a useful tool, pretty easy to pull off. Um, and we're just creating a series of these things. With the waterline effect, we're spacing them out. The further we get away, the more they get spaced out. And that's the trick, trying to get it just right. Can be tricky, um, but we got this. So uh, let's jump into QGIS and see how this is done. Here we are in QGIS version 3.28.11. I have some open street map data of Nantucket, an island off the coast of Massachusetts. So I've got the brown land and I've got blue ponds, water bodies, whatever you want to call them, lakes, um, shown here as well. So, so big two layers, shape files, the units are in, um, meters. It's a mass state plane projection, but, uh, but you know, we're, we're measuring everything in meters and this is now we're going to draw some water lines around these areas, right? So how are we going to do this? This is the simplest way. Uh, you can do it. There are many ways to, to draw water lines, some more automatic, some that you can save off. Uh, but this is the most straightforward way that you know, I find that's it's pretty, pretty repeatable. And, um, you know, it takes a little longer to peck in, but it is, um, it makes sense. It's the simplest way. I like to do, to use the multi distance buffer tool. So this is a plugin you can find in your plugin section. And um, what you do is enter the value of the, the line that you want around your shape, and then you just peck it in, right? So in this case, we've got 15, and I hit add, and it puts it over here. And these values will start to go down. So we've got 31, 47, and on down the line. And I'm going to do 42 of these in order to get those water lines where I want them, you know, getting larger and larger as we move out. Uh, and I'm going to peck all those, all these values in and uh, I'll pause this because it might take a couple minutes, uh, but I'll be back in one second. Okay. I've got them all pecked in. I'll show you where, where to get the values in a second, but we've got 42 values in here, ranging from 15 to 2028. These are the distances in meters that we're going to buffer our lines out. So I'll hit OK, and that will draw it out like that. OK, now we've got all of the exterior lines drawn in. What I'm going to do now is switch to the ponds. I'm going to do the interior lines, which means I need to use a negative sign so I start to buffer inwards from these polygons. And what I'm going to do in order to make this a little more, a little quicker than retyping all those values is I'm just going to go in, double click on the value and put a negative sign in front of it. So this will just take a couple seconds, but I will pause it just to save some time. Okay, I've got all 42 values in now with the negative sign. So same numbers, just the negative values set to Nantucket ponds. And we will hit OK to that. And it draws in the interior lines here. So let's let's resymbolize this. This is getting a little, a little ugly here. Um, what I'm going to do is simply set this to 
one second here we go we want a a transparent fill with a blue line set this to point one and that gives me my ponds I'll do the same thing I could set that to do it but to save a style automatically but um, here's, this is what we have here um, so all drawn in right so that's the easiest way to do it where do I get these values from I've got a cheat sheet for you so this is my water lining cheat sheet this will give you all the values that you need to peck in right that here in column F we have the 15 the 31 47 those are the values we were pecking in before and these will go all the way down to 45 uh, well 45 42 buffer distances okay so these are in meters measuring out 15 meters 31 meters 47 meters if you want to I've given you six different columns here you can change these around if you want if you, you're like you know what I want something a little bit wider a little bit tighter those values will change okay so um, you kind of look at you know this is 7,816 those and this is 2,000 meters here that's you know going to bring the water line out a lot further if, if you want a different look so you can play around with those and then peck in these values instead and you can play around with different values um, to your heart's content um, I've given you some other values here or some uh, some visual uh, ideas right so this is column B when you first load it up if you change them then you know it's different but um, column F is my attempt to recreate this 1901 version of the topo sheet so it's just, you know 42 lines 42 buffer lines covering about 2,000 meters out um, and then what we have down here is I've taken these values and spread them out horizontally so if you're going to use the multi-ring buffer which we didn't cover but that's another way you can do water lines you can just copy this value right and i would paste in that whole whole range and uh, that's another plugin we haven't covered it but um it's got pros and cons um to it as well you can only do outside water lines with that so anyways um there's instructions for that in here um and um, you'll get that. So this link is in the description below. You can you go grab that. And um, then you'll have those values. So once those are in, um, you can symbolize it and then move it on over to felt. Let's do that next. We've got our water lines drawn in here in QGIS at the specified distances, the interior and the exterior lines match. I've symbolized it nicely just more for illustration purposes. We're going to have to redo this when we get it over to felt. Um, and then um, we let's, let's do that now. So what we could do is export these off as a shapefile or a geo package or something and just drag it right into felt and they would pop up. You know, felt's good at doing that. Um, but an even easier way than that, if you can believe it, is to use the felt plugin. So I've got that here. Uh, and... All I'm going to do is click add to felt. So it's going to take all of those values and dump them in. Let's go to open map and take a look at that. And you can see it's coming in now um, right over Nantucket where we want it. And it's bringing in everything. So um, all of those values. And here we go. We've got the water lines drawn right in where they're supposed to be. So, you know, sort of the beauty of this system, right, where I use OpenStreetMap data to, to do my work, um, Felt also uses OpenStreetMap data. So when I create these buffers in QGIS, they're going to line up exactly with what you're going to see when you use OpenStreetMap data in Felt. So that's kind of a nice a nice advantage there. Um, so let's let's make these pretty. So with the fill, we'll set that to none stroke we will I like that blue we'll keep that and we just thin those lines out a little bit maybe 0.5 and then we'll do the same to the interior polygon or the exterior polygons none and thin those out too 
same thing like the match and there we go right so we've got those values drawn in there exactly where we want with that expanding value and uh there we go so that's it so that is uh how you get water lines and felt that's a nice straightforward way to really dress up your maps looking forward to seeing a lot of water lines out there in the wild and uh thank you for the opportunity to teach you and best of luck cheers